Dreisaitl was drafted third overall in the 2014 NHL entry draft to the Edmonton Oilers. He currently sits at exactly a pointy game player, having played 422 NHL games, and of course, putting up 422 points. That's what a pointy game is, okay? Quick math. The only other person from Leon's draft year that is somewhat close to him in points is David Pasternak, who we have also done a career simulation for. Dreisaitl was sitting at 110 points in just 71 games when the NHL season was postponed. That is an absolutely ridiculous number. He was leading the NHL, so Dreisaitl's probably feeling the postponement, if that's even a word, pretty hard. In fact, I'm upset. I wanted to see how many points he could get this year. He still had 11 games left. That's quite a bit, okay? Especially if you have 110 in 71. Also, I saw a comment where someone was salty that I was upset, or I called it a poor season, that someone got 60 points. And I guess it was the full 82 games. That is a poor season, all right? The people I'm simulating, you better get a point per game or you're a failure. Okay, fine. That's not always true. I'll ease up a little bit. Just another fun little fact here, which I'm sure everyone knows anyway. Dreisaitl is one of the few German players, German-born players in the league. Anyway, enough of the intro. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of these videos. Let's see what EA Sports thinks is going to happen in Leon Dreisaitl's career. In year one, Dreisaitl will be playing alongside Connor McDavid and Alex Chason, at least to start the season. Let's be honest, they don't even need another winger. They could just do four on five the entire time. And I should have said five on four. I don't like it the other way at all. Anyway, defense, all right. Goaltending, not too bad, I suppose. $8.5 million over the next six years. And they trade away their prospect and first round pick, Evan Bouchard, for some players that are ready to go now. So it looks like they're trying to send it. But unfortunately, send it, they did not. They got 88 points with 40. 32 regulation wins, 36 regulation losses, finishing 4th in the Pacific Division, and 19th in the entire league. Individually, Dreisaitl played 82 games, and he got 83 points, so he still put up a point a game, which is acceptable, I suppose. 34 goals, 49 assists, I guess you could say that that first line is indeed working out. The Chicago Blackhawks take home the Stanley Cup in year number 1, and there will be no hardware individually going home with Leon. In year two, Dreisaitl has been bumped all the way up to a 95 overall, but he has been bumped down to the second line where he will play with Andreas Athanasiu and Benson. The defense looking very similar here. Not much has changed from that perspective of the team. And in goaltending, pretty much the same overall wise, but they got Thomas Grice as the starter this year. The Oilers would make the playoffs 89 points and 40 regulation wins, getting just one more point than they did last year, finishing fifth in the Pacific and 21st in the entire NHL. Leon Dreisaitl would lead the team this year, only getting 79 points. Yes, only in 82 games. I guess he was on the second line and he still led the team. So clearly he should still be on the first line. St. Louis Blues are your Stanley Cup champions. And once again, Leon Dreisaitl would not be going home with any team or individual hardware this year. Here is the playoff bracket. You can see the Edmonton Oilers were eliminated in round number one by the St. Louis Blues, the eventual Stanley Cup champions. Leon would be bumped up to the first line this year, putting McDavid on the second line, but he's staying with Andreas. However, he will have a new right winger in Jesse Pugliarvi. The second line still looking pretty good. Offense overall looking strong. Defense as well looking like it's going to do just fine. Goaltending a little bit weak, but what can you do? Here is his contract. He's got four years left still on that $8.5 million deal. The Edmonton Oilers would finish with 94 points this year, 44 regulation wins, getting third in the Pacific Division and 14th in the entire NHL. So that's a pretty good year for them. When it comes to individual points, Dreisaitl would lead the team once again. 81 points in 82 games this year. Pretty significant lead as well. As you can see, McDavid down there only played 44 games. The Toronto Maple Leafs are going to be the Stanley Cup champion and yes, you did see that correctly. The Edmonton Oilers did make it all the way to the Stanley Cup final this year where they would lose to the Toronto Maple Leafs in a seven-game series. They were so close but just couldn't quite get it done. Entering year four, Dreisaitl will still be on the first line. He's all the way up to 96 overall. He will be playing with Pogliarvi and Yamamoto this year. The defense would be buffed up a little bit here as the Oilers have added Ekholm to that top pairing. Goaltending wise needs to be looked into soon. All right, just going to throw that out there. Still got three years left on the $8.5 million contract. The Oilers would also make this trade, which, you know, 
It's not the biggest trade in the world, but I figured I would let you know. The Oilers got 100 points in 47 regulation wins this year, third in the Pacific Division and eighth in the entire NHL, so a pretty competitive division. Dreisaitl would finish just behind McDavid this year, getting 91 points in 82 games, so a great season for him. The top two really pulled away from the rest of the team point-wise. The Winnipeg Jets are going to be your Stanley Cup champions, and despite having a successful season, there will be no hardware going home with Leon Dreisaitl. The Edmonton Oilers would be eliminated in the conference finals to the Winnipeg Jets in five games. In year five, Dreisaitl will be playing alongside McDavid and Pujarvi this year, so that is a deadly first line. You love to see it. The rest of the offense is also looking pretty strong overall, and Dreisaitl is up to a 97 overall with two years left on that $8.5 million contract. Defense is looking pretty solid. Goaltending, not so much. I think they need to address that, as I previously said. The Oilers, going to miss the playoffs, though, getting 80 points and only 38 regulation wins, which would get them 6th in the Pacific Division and 24th in the entire NHL. Dreisaitl and McDavid would tie this year, putting up 82 points apiece, both playing the full 82-game season. Dreisaitl definitely more of the goal scorer, though, putting up 43 goals and 39 assists. The Winnipeg Jets are going to win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, and despite a point-a-game season, Dreisaitl will be going home empty-handed. But the Edmonton Oilers actually won the freaking draft lottery. You can't make this up. They were eighth, and they went all the way up to first. They drafted a medium elite two-way defender there in Mr. Eaton. So let's see what they can do with him. McDavid and Dreisaitl will still be playing together, however they will be playing with Tyler Benson this year on their right wing, and the offense overall is looking pretty solid. The defense, they did not put Eaton in just yet, so they're deciding to play him in the minors, I suppose. And Varlamov is the starting goalie at 80 overall. Did not quite address the goalie situation. This is also the last year on the $8.5 million contract. But the Oilers would sneak into the playoffs with a weak division this year, getting 39 regulation wins, 87 points for third in the Pacific Division. And individually, Dreisaitl and McDavid went off. 108 points for McDavid, 96 for Dreisaitl, even Benson got 82 that year, and Dreisaitl would sign a brand new $11.6 million contract over six years. The Ottawa Senators are your Stanley Cup champions, and there will be no hardware going home with any individual Edmonton Oilers players this year. Here is the playoff bracket. The Edmonton Oilers made it past the first round against the Anaheim Ducks, but were eliminated in round two by the San Jose Sharks. The Edmonton Oilers would begin year seven by shipping out Anthony Beauvillier and a third for Wallander and a wannabe Biz Nasty. The first line still the same here with Dreisaitl, McDavid, and a much boosted Benson up to 88 overall on the right wing. Defense looking like this. We are still not getting a glimpse of Eaton, but I'm sure we will in the very near future. The Oilers refuse to address their goalie situation here. 78 overall Varlamov is not going to cut it. And that is proven true here as the Edmonton Oilers would only get 30. Six regulation wins this year, 81 points, finishing 5th in the Pacific Division and 21st in the entire NHL. Individually, Dreisaitl and McDavid would still succeed, getting over a point a game. Dreisaitl got 88 points on the season, 38 goals and 50 assists. Can't complain about that. The Stanley Cup would go to the Buffalo Sabres. And honestly, I kind of want to start showing in the next simulations how many points people are getting in the entire NHL. Just show the full league stats. In year 8, the Oilers would play Dreisaitl, McDavid, and Yamamoto together. Dreisaitl still has 5 years left on that $11.6 million contract. So a bit of a switch up there. Benson is no longer with the team, it appears. The defense looking like this. We finally get to see Eaton, and they finally address the goaltending situation. However, that would not help them, apparently. 83 points on the season with 37 regulation wins, getting them 22nd in the entire NHL and 5th in the Pacific Division. However, in 
individually, this is the best season Drysdale's had so far, putting up 105 points. That whole first line clearly just clicked and worked together. 50 goal marker for Drysdale as well this year, so that is huge. As you can see, Drysdale is up there. He finished sixth in the entire NHL for points on the year, so yeah, that just goes and tops off what was a great season. The Buffalo Sabres, I don't know what it is with winning back-to-backs in this game, but they just won their second Stanley Cup in a row, and there will still be no individual hardware going home with Dreisaitl, even though he absolutely lit it up. Here's some free agents this year. We got Rasmus Dahlin, we got Jack Hughes, John Tavares, a bunch of big names in free agents this year, and Freddie Anderson is there as well. This line is absolutely filthy. McDavid, Dreisaitl, Yamamoto, 97, 96, and 90 overall, respectively. Dreisaitl still has four years left on the $11.6 million contract. And defensively, Eaton has disappeared. I believe this would have been the year he would have been a restricted free agent. So I don't know if someone offer sheeted him or what's up with that, but he's gone. Matt Murray still the starting goaltender, and the Edmonton Oilers would hop back on the successful team train here. 97 points, getting 12th in the entire NHL and second in the Pacific Division. Dreisaitl also having himself a year, getting 84 points in 81 games played. Just above point a game there, 34 goals and 50 apples. 96 overall, he's got the exact franchise potential. What a beauty. And I guess I started showing the entire league stats in this video. I don't exactly remember doing that, but I suppose it happened. The Toronto Maple Leafs are going to be your Stanley Cup champions. And despite a successful season, no trophies will be going home with Oilers players. And they would once again be eliminated by the Toronto Maple Leafs in the Stanley Cup Finals seven games. That is deja vu. That is heartbreaking. You hate to see it. Kucherov, Morgan Riley, and Svechnikov, the headliners of free agency this year. I guess my auto GM mans decided he wanted to try and get Bertuzzi. And as you can see, we got Kata Hat and Ilya Samsonov up there as well. A minor switch up, the Oilers would put Dreisaitl on the wing this year. McDavid would be back in the middle. Dreisaitl at 95 overall now. He was at 96 at the end of last year. Walter Eaton finally making his return. 85 overall, he has jumped right up to the first pair at 22 years of age, so good for him. And Matt Murray will continue to be the starting goaltender for the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers would place third in the Pacific Division this year, 93 points and getting 42 regulation wins, which would be good enough for 14th in the entire league. It appears from a team perspective, they have finally gotten it together and are starting to perform well. Dreisaitl will put up 92 points in just 75 games this year. Missed a few games due to injury, I would assume. So a great year for him. Here is the leaders. A new Edler for the Vancouver Canucks would get 107 points and he would lead the NHL. McDavid up there with 100 as well. Landeskog, 99. Eichel, pretty much still mostly the same names you would expect, along with some created players mixed in there. Buffalo, going to be the Stanley Cup champions, and this just gets more and more heartbreaking for the Edmonton Oilers. I don't know what to say at this point. They got to the Stanley Cup Finals yet again and lost in seven games to the Buffalo Sabres. They just really can't close it out. They can't do it. Here are some of the top free agents this year. As you can see, we got Provorov and Hall. Johnny Goudreau down there at 85 overall now. He's starting to tail off. And here's the goaltenders. Not a strong free agent year for goalies. Dreisaitl is now 33 years of age. He has two years left on the $11.6 million contract. He's down now to a 92 overall. He will once again be playing with McDavid and Yamamoto. Eaton still up on that first pair there. He's all the way up to an 88 overall now, so he's clearly starting to pan out. Matt Murray will still be the starting goaltender for the Oilers. And the Oilers would also acquire Tony D'Angelo to buff up their defensive core a little bit for a prospect and a second round pick. The Oilers would finish second in the Pacific Division this year, getting 93 points, 41 regulation wins, which would be good enough to get them 13th in the entire NHL. Dreisaitl would put up 85 points in 82 games this year, 43 goals, 42 apples. Almost had it split, but had to prove he was a goal scorer by getting just one more. Here are the top point getters for this year, headlined by McKinnon, Matthews, and Braden Point. Nylander also up there. You see Jack Hughes and Jesper Bratt were at the top as well. The Colorado Avalanche were the victors this year when it comes to the Stanley Cup, and Walter Eaton taking home an individual trophy, so congratulations to him. The Edmonton Oilers would be eliminated 
by the Sharks of San Jose in six games in round number one. Here are some of the headliner free agents for this year. In case anyone out there is interested, these are the player free agents. And in terms of goalie free agents, we got Thatcher Demko, Igor Shesterkin, Jordan Bennington, and the list goes on. Year 12, Dreisaitl would be down to a 90 overall, but the line would remain the same. Dreisaitl, McDavid, and Yamamoto. Walter Eaton still on the first pair there with Dante Fabro. And the goaltender situation is starting to depreciate once again here, so they might need to look into that. This is the final year for the $11.6 million contract that Dreisaitl had signed, and they are trading away Walter's defensive partner, Dante, and I demand to know exactly why they would do such a thing. The Oilers, finishing with 100 points this year, 45 wins in regulation, 27 losses in regulation, and 10 overtime losses, which is good enough to get them third in the Pacific Division and eighth in the entire NHL. The Stanley Cup will be going to New York, where the Islanders will be holding it. The Lady Bing Trophy goes to Yamamoto, but no trophies for Dreisaitl this year. The Oilers would also be eliminated in round number one by the Vancouver Canucks. They went the distance, the full mile, seven games, and Dreisaitl will be testing free agency for for the first time. He's at 89 overall and he's still only 35 years of age. So let's see what team's going to pick him up. Will he go back to the Oilers or will he sign with a new team? I'm just going to show you guys the stats because it's pretty funny actually. A lot of times you guys point out some interesting stats that I miss. In year 13, Dreisaitl would finally try out a new team here. He's 89 overall, and he's still got a very solid first line to work with here on the Florida Panthers. He will also have another German teammate there in Dominic Kubalik. He signed a one-year, $9.3 million contract with the Panthers, and here is their defensive core. Very front-heavy with Dahlin and Ekblad up there, and they got Carter Hart, kind of hot, as the starter. The Florida Panthers would make the playoffs. They got 93 points and 42 regulation wins, which is good enough for 5th in the Atlantic and 14th in the entire NHL. They would, however, be eliminated in the first round by the Toronto Maple Leafs. Drysaddle just cannot get the better of these Leafs, man, in seven games. To my surprise, at 36 years of age and 1,403 games played, Dreisaitl decided to call it quits. You can see he got 22 goals and 43 points in 80 games played for the Panthers that year and dropped down to an 85 overall. He did, in fact, get... 1,433 points, so he was above a point a game throughout his whole career, which is very impressive. Here are some of the playoff stats for anyone who is interested. So a great career for Leon Dreisaitl. However, I've definitely seen him simulate better. Although Dreisaitl retired early, and as I mentioned, this was not one of the better simulations I've had with him, he would still finish with 1,433 points, which currently, if we ignore all other retirees in the game, would put him at spot number 17, just below Timu Solani. Certainly not a big deal or anything like that. So overall, this is how EA Sports, at least in this simulation, believes Leon Dreisaitl's career will go. If he keeps up the pace that he's currently at in real life, then I think that he is going to surpass this by quite a bit, but that's assuming he stays as flaming hot as he is right now. 110 points in 71 games? Come on. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I truly do appreciate you and the views for this channel and everything has gone up significantly recently, so I really have you guys to thank for that, and I hope I am putting out content that you guys enjoy. So yeah, with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.